System secure. This chapter of the DVD will focus on weapons of mass destruction. What are they? A few examples of each. And basic first responder actions which may save your life and the life of others. There are five main kinds of weapons of mass destruction. We use the acronym Be Nice to describe them. They are Biological, Nuclear, Incendiary, Chemical, Explosive. A biological agent is something that makes you sick and spreads easily. They are intentionally induced mass diseases. Examples are bacteria, viruses, and various toxins. Nuclear terrorism can occur in several ways, from a threat of actual deployment of a nuclear bomb to the spreading of radioactive material, which is also toxic, and it is a byproduct of a nuclear reaction. An incendiary device is any mechanical, electrical, or chemical device purposely used to start a fire. A chemical agent can injure or kill by being inhaled into your lungs, by being swallowed, or through your skin. Some examples are those that affect the nervous system, those that could cause skin damage, and those that prevent your blood from absorbing oxygen. An explosive commonly known as a bomb is probably the best known device, and also the most frequently used. Bombs of every kind can cause damage from the initial force of the explosion, from shrapnel, and from the danger of falling objects. The different weapons show their effects in different timelines. An explosion, of course, has an immediate effect on people, while fire or the release of nuclear materials will have an effect within a few minutes. Chemicals will also affect humans very quickly, usually within an hour. On the other hand, bacteria or other biological agents will take more than a few days before people start showing symptoms of illness. Why would a terrorist group choose one weapon over another? It depends largely on the group's amount of money, their access to the target site, and the kind of devastation they want to inflict. The viruses and bacteria needed for biological weapons, those that cause mass illnesses, discomfort, and possibly death, are sadly easy to come by, but difficult to employ and diagnose. We humans have an inborn fear of plague-like terrorism because we feel that we cannot protect ourselves and those we love. However, the disadvantages to the potential terrorists mostly outweigh those advantages. Some examples of biological agents are anthrax, botulism, cholera, plague, and smallpox. As we said before, a nuclear weapon may be either the actual detonation of a nuclear bomb, such as the ones launched over Hiroshima and Nagasaki in the Second World War, or the release of radiological materials. A nuclear bomb would have immense effects on both people and structures, and those effects last a very long time. The psychological impact is enormous. However, despite writing in the popular media, it's not all that simple to get one's hands on the materials needed to create a nuclear bomb, and it is extremely expensive. And the retaliation by the United States would be devastating. Radiological materials, which can cause both immediate acute poisoning and long-term health problems, can be deployed as a secondary component of another weapon, such as a dirty bomb. An example of a dirty bomb would be radiological material attached to a common explosive device, such as a pipe bomb. An incendiary device is something that starts a fire. Such devices are easy to make from materials anyone can buy. Fire is very frightening because it is dramatic, dangerous, and it grows and moves very fast. The terrorists may end up destroying more property than lives. Incendiary devices can be started by chemical, electronic, or mechanical triggers, and they may be left in place, thrown by hand, or self-propelled like a rocket. The C in the Be Nice acronym stands for Chemical Agents. You may have heard of the nerve agent Sarin released in the Tokyo subway system by a terrorist group in 1995. 
Like biological agents, they are easy to find and steal, easy to make, and relatively cheap. They also have a strong psychological effect on the victim population. The disadvantages to the terrorists make chemical agents less likely to be deployed. However, we should not downplay the possibility of their uses. Should symptoms be present, such as people having difficulty breathing or unusual smells, or suspicious circumstances, such as unscheduled spraying, the important thing to do is to leave the area and notify emergency responders immediately. By far, the most common weapon of mass destruction is an explosive, a bomb. Over 70% of terrorist incidents involve bombs. They are dramatic, pose little risk to the bomber, and are easy to explode from a distance. The main disadvantages to the terrorist are that they need to gather a lot of intelligence about the site they want to attack. They run many risks of being detected before they can execute the attack. And also, they may or will kill or hurt innocent bystanders. The video that follows was created for the California Commission on Peace Officer Standards and Training, or POST for short. This segment from a recent training video emphasizes the use of explosives as weapons of mass destruction, but also introduces other types we have discussed. In this video, the term CBRNE is used for the types we described previously. CBRNE stands for chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and explosive weapons. The video will also use the term TLO when describing a special role for a police officer, a terrorism liaison officer. The video tells the officers to report their suspicions and evidence to the TLO. In your role as a security professional, please report according to your post orders. This is described in the fourth lesson in this program, coordination and sharing of critical information.